presenting Orson Welles as the third man. The Lives of Harry Lyme. The fabulous stories of the immortal character originally created in the motion picture The Third Man. With zither music by Anton Karras. That was the shot that killed Harry Lyme. He died in a sewer beneath Vienna. As those of you know who saw the movie The Third Man. Yes, that was the end of Harry Lyme. But it was not the beginning. Harry Lyme had many lives. And I can recount all of them. How do I know? Very simple. Because my name is Harry Lyme. <laughs> Say what you will about Harry Lyme. He at least was honest in his desire for money and the good things of life. Harry believed in seeing the world at other people's expense. Sometimes the cost ran high, as high as a man's life. Let me tell you about it. I know what I'm talking about. And now, Orson Welles as Harry Lyme, the third man, in Play Pigeon. My fortunes being for the moment at ebb tide, it pleased me to return to America, to New York specifically, because I heard that an old and important enemy of mine was in difficulties and wished to see me. I went to the hotel where he was staying, supposedly incognito, and made myself available at the bar. But nothing happened. I ran up quite a bar bill and things were looking serious. So I ordered another drink. And then. Mr. Lyon. Mr. Harry Lyon. Uh. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. I, I'm sorry to bother you. Bother? If all, all bothersome things were as attractively packaged, I'd grant to be the most burdened of men. Well, won't you join me? I didn't come here for that reason, Mr. Lyon. I know. It's a friendly gesture, and I have a hunch we're going to see a lot of each other. Now, since you know my name, why don't you tell me yours? That's unimportant. Well, as a matter of opinion. Will you, will you please come with me? Well, I say, isn't that to approach a little bold, after all, an establishment like this frowns on such a obvious... Please, Mr. Lyme, come with me. You're the only one who can save him. He? Save anybody? <laughs> You've come to the wrong Harry Lyme. Please, you must, even though you hate him. Hate him? Now you interest me now. Just which antagonist do you mean? I've got an awful lot of enemies. We're wasting time. He'll, he'll pay you a great deal of money. Money? You can name your own price. The price of my hatred comes pretty high. But for money and hate, Lyme goes anywhere. Lovely lady, lead on. Profitable business should be made as painless as possible, and this girl was a pleasure. The dark Irish type with eyes, the mood and color of the restless channel waters and hair, as blue-black as the proverbial raven's wing. I began to enjoy myself. My waiting game was going to pay off through an old enemy. It was a fine evening for cold mischief. We took the elevator in silence, walking down the corridor to the suite of my enemy. I studied my young guide. She caught my glance. Her color mounted. I smiled. We're almost there. I say, are you bringing me on a wild goose chase? If it is, then it's the goose that lays the golden egg, Mr. Lyon. <laughs> and this is it. You don't approve of me, do you? Follow me, please. Well, I'd love to. You're just like the rest of the public, you know, you're always clamoring for high ideals, fair play, and always the first to indict without a hearing. Yes? I found him, sir. To the contrary, I found you. Please. Well, come in, by all means. The Honorable James Hadley, I believe. Aren't you surprised to see me, Lyme? Not particularly. 
This morning, when the wind from the East River brought with it the usual aroma of stale grease, ancient garbage, and sewer gas, I had an idea I might run into Governor Hadley before the day was out. Aren't you in the wrong state? Hmm. Still the same old Harry. Insulting, conniving. And you're the man I'm supposed to help? <laughs> it's not by choice, believe me. That I do believe, Governor. The dislike is mutual. Well, Governor, it's nice leaving oh, you. Wait, Lyme. I'm offering you $15,000. If... if... Had I better leave, Governor? Uh, no. You're responsible for bringing Lyme here, Nora. Perhaps my only hope of keeping him here. You're quite wrong, sir. There are 15,000 reasons holding me here for the time being. How long I remain depends on you. Talk. I know how you hate me. I also know your capabilities, Lyme. You're the only man to accomplish the job I have in mind. I've already told you what I'd pay... I'm, I'm begging you to help me. That's good. You begging me for help. All right. Sing your sad song, Hadley, old man, about the beast you must feed. You, you know. Don't I always know, Governor? Knowing who was after your official scalp, I realized you'd undoubtedly come to me for help. Use one poison as the antidote for another. And made myself available. You found me. You mean... You knew it all the time, even downstairs, you knew... In general, dear Nora, though I neither knew the sordid details nor the price to be paid for my services. Show him the pictures, Nora. Yes, Captain. Right here in the briefcase. Here you are. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> my governor, I didn't think it even of you. You see, Nora, even Lyme believes the man in those cursed pictures is me. <laughs> it's very interesting. Who's the, uh, the lady? How should I know? Oh, come on now, Governor. Official manners, or in this case, even unofficial manners, demand that you at least know the name of your uh, female companion. Has American etiquette deteriorated to the point that you summon such creatures with a hey, you? Mr. Lyme, I'll have you know that Governor Hadley is not the man in those pictures. And good little girl should never, never tell lies, not a... Oh, hang it all. She's telling the truth, Lyme. I never frequent such clubs as those pictures show. I'm here. Here, look at this one. You recognize a newcomer to the party. Mm, yes, Cato. Cato, the robber baron. I admire his instincts, but not always his performance. He's a bit clumsy. Trubish Cato. Mm. Gambler, ward heater, grafter. Such dear, nostalgic words. You almost make me homesick, Governor. Uh, be sensible, Lyme. Can you imagine me in such company at any time? Particularly with an election coming up next month? Not unless you're even more stupid than you used to be, James. But then everything is possible. Really, Mr. Lyme, this is the... But cameras don't lie. You, above anyone else, should know better than that, Lyme. How many times have you faked the picture to gain your end? Mm, touche, <laughs> Governor, but then I always do things the hard way. You told Nora that yourself. Yeah, it's hard for your victims. Oh, but this isn't getting us any place. No matter what else you may choose to think of me, Lyme, you know my term in office has been clean. Insofar as proof is concerned, the incorruptible Governor Hadley. However, these pictures have proved extremely embarrassing, old man. The... Untouchable Hadley seems to have been taken. I don't know much about you, Mr. Lyon, except that you hate Governor Hadley. But now he's asking for your help. No matter what happened in the past between you, please help him. He's willing to pay. He said your hatred came high. Wasn't his offer high enough? But Nora. That's quite all right, Governor. I admire honesty and loyalty, even though I don't approve of it or believe in it. Come here, Nora. What? Come here. Why don't you stand right before me? Look. Right into my eyes, straight in my eyes. Answer a question. But I... Well, Mr. Lyme, what is it? If I were the governor, and you were my secretary, would you be as honest, as loyal? As honest? Yes. As loyal? No. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, why the great concern about these pictures, Hadley? Surely your indiscretions aren't that important. Then you are going to help me. I'm considering it. Then you know those pictures are important, Lyme. Cato's going to use them to ruin me. Why? He wants control of my state. Either his crooked syndicate moves in, or he sends these pictures to every newspaper in the state on the eve of the election. <laughs> True, Miss Cato has improved with the years. This is almost worthy of me. I never expected you to understand, Lyme. But I thought the fee might make it worth your while. Re-election means a great deal to me. I've worked hard for my office. Yeah. I don't want to win or lose because of a hoodlum like Cato. I, and I don't want my wife, my family, to be subjugated to this kind of smear campaign. They don't deserve it. Spoken like a true family man, an American and a politician. Governor Hadley, there must be some other way to get the negatives than this, this man. Oh, please, not Elaine, the fair Elaine, the lovable Elaine, the lily maid of Astolux. High in her chamber, up a tower to the east, guarded the sacred shield. 
I'll get the negatives and the rest of these pictures from Cato for 15000 Oh, thank you. And dismissal of all charges against me in your state, old man. What? The price is cheap, Governor, for your career, your family. Well, Governor, you can't. Just a moment, Nora. Very well, Lyme. You'll get me those negatives and you'll receive your money and full pardon. I'll take the money now. I expected that. Pay him, Nora. How... How do you know you can trust him, sir? He's the only man I know who can outwit Cato. I've got to trust him. My uh, fee, Miss Payton? Here it is. You'd better count it, Mr. Lyon. But why? I trust you. Oh. <clears throat> Just how do you plan to contact Cato? Well, that's easy enough. Easy to find a man like Cato. The hard part is in avoiding him. You should know that very well, Governor. Well, uh, what is my next move? Right back to your nice snug capital. Return to your ivory tower, Hadley, and carry on business as usual. Oh, very well. We might as well start packing, Nora. We'll leave, we'll leave at once. Yes, Governor. No. What? Nora stays with me. I... I what? Now, listen here, Lyon. Cato doesn't know by sight, does he? I don't think so. He contacted me away from his office. And she'll be our go You can still pack, Nora. I want you to register at another hotel, the Plaza. I'll meet you at the cocktail lounge in three hours. Just what do you uh, think? Nora. I... I'd appreciate it if you would cooperate with Mr. Lyon in whatever way you can. Well, Nora. Very well, Governor. I'll do my best. Uh, you understand, Nora. We must trust Mr. Lyon. <laughs> well, who wants to talk in the hall, Cato? Let me in. Come in, then. Well? Well, what have you found out, Izzy? I am tailing Governor Heavy like you want ever since he sneaked into town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to the point. Who is staying away from the point? The governor is making contacts with every main hood in New York. But nobody wants to go against Cato. <laughs> Hmm. Only Hadley must be finding someone who will go against you because he leaves the hotel three hours ago. Leaves? Checks out is taking a powder. But before that, he sends his girl down to the bar. Girl? What girl? Who knows her name? But who this girl talks to down at the bar, you'll never guess. Come on, give. I'm not playing guessing games. All right, all right, Cato. So don't get sore at me. I'm trying to tell you all the time. She meets a Harry Lyme. I hear her say the name. Harry Lyme. This is not good news. Harry Lyme's the only guy, but the only guy who can louse me up. He would have to come to New York. Come on. Come on where? To the plaza, you jerk. If Lyme's to come into this game, he's going to be on my side, alive or dead. Mr. Lyme, Mr. Lyme. Nora, I never dared hope you'd be this eager to see me. It's Cato over at the bar. Oh, have a drink. What are you going to do about Cato? Careful, Mr. Wayland. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what will you help? Well, what's your pleasure, honey? Nothing. Anything. Well, that offers a pretty wide choice. Waiter, scotch and water for two. Uh, two scotch and water, it is. Yeah? I want you to smile, Laura. Look relax. Listen very carefully to what I have to say. I, I'm trying. I'm glad you blessed me once before I die. What? Your smile. It's the first time I've seen it. It's radiance. It's breathtaking. Please. Leave me once, Nona. When you're going to the powder room, don't return. Go to your room and stay there. I don't understand. Mr. Cato is preparing to beard me in his den, and I want you around when he does. But I... He's coming this way. All right. I'll call you by morning and get back to the capital fast. What oh. about you? Why, Nona, I never dreamed you came. Oh, of all the... You are Scotch and water, sir? Fine, fine. Yes. There you are. Ah, oh, thank you, sir. Drinking alone, Lime? That can turn into a bad habit. True, there's Cato in the flesh. It is uh, flesh, isn't it, old boy? <laughs> Same old Harry. How about buying me the next pound, Harry? At my place. Why, true, this old man. Are you thinking of taking me for a ride? Why, oh, It's all right, it's all right, old man. I, I came for anything. Shall we go? <laughs> Orson Welles returns in just a moment as the third man.
Orson Welles as the third man continues with Play Pigeon. <laughs> Sounds funny, but it's true. I was being taken for a ride. And a long one. A silent one. Once we got in the car, Trubus stopped talking, and I was not in the mood to make any conversation. I had my tiger by the tail, and I waited for his move. Wait in the car, Izzy. This won't take long. Okay, boss. I am waiting. <laughs> After our nocturnal tour, you bring me to a ruin like this? Really, Cato, I thought you were doing pretty well. Mm, I'm doing fine, Harry. Place on the state line, not too far from the capital. Makes it handy. Mm, for you or the governor? <laughs> Wait and see. Trubus! Well, this is a surprise. Hadley! <laughs> Who's this fellow, Trubus? The face is Jim Hadley's and the voice is almost identical. Inside, Luke. Come on, Harry. And I'll buy you that drink I promised. Sure. Drinks on the house. Yes, yes, I, I could use one. Now, sit down, Harry. I, I didn't think I'd see you so soon again, Trubus. What happened, did you? Shut up. Pour the drinks. Oh, uh, sure, sure, Trubus. Now, Harry, I'm open for business. All right. <laughs> to risk the obvious, this isn't Governor Hadley. <laughs> hey, you bet I'm not. The Hadley boys were identical twins. Luke here was the black sheep of the family. Also, was supposed to have died in a train wreck 15 years ago. Identical twins, the oldest pitch in the world. Luke was the man in those pictures. So simple it always works. Even fool you, Harry. Oh, I can be fooled. I can be fooled. Ah, Luke's lived on jealousy and whiskey ever since he's seen the accident. He crossed my path several years ago just as I was figuring how to move into Jim Hadley's state. He was an answer from heaven. Yeah, or the devil. I thought I had luck. I can give you a fat fee, Harry, and a fine chance to pay off your old grudge against the governor. Uh, since when has benevolence become one of your characteristics, Cato? What about this fat fee? You only paid me. Shut up. I... As you know, I've already made the first contact with the governor. How do you know I know? Takes one to catch one, Harry. Mm. <laughs> As I said, I got Jim over a barrel. I know he's bought you to get the pictures from me, but if you come into my deal... You not only make yourself some money, but you can put the final squeeze on the good governor. Uh-uh. Planning to set me up as a clay pigeon, are you, old man? Sending me to make the actual transaction so you can move your syndicate into the state while I'm caught with my blackmail down. No, Harry, you'd know I wouldn't do that. To coin a cliche about thieves, Cato. <laughs> I know. How much is the governor paying you to get these negatives? Fifteen thousand and a full pardon. Fifteen thousand? Why, Trubus, you only gave me five hundred dollars to pose in those pictures. I'll give you twenty-five thousand to come in with me, Harry. Twenty-five in advance, half of it. The rest when the deal is clinched. Listen here, Trubus. If you're so quick to throw money around, toss some my way. I, I be and cheap. the percentage of my gross to take when I'm in the state. It'll be like an annuity, Harry. You listen to me, Trubus. You cut me in on this big deal you're talking about. If you don't, I'll go to jail. You know what, Luke? No, nothing, kid. I, I didn't mean... I, I was only trying to... Oh, what are you going to do, Trubus? Is he? I... Take this rap and let Muggsy work him over. No. He talks too much. No, no, I promise not to talk. You need me. I'll never... Come on, no. No. No, no please. Come on. I won't, no. Well... What's your answer, Harry? Do all of your business partners get that treatment, old man? <laughs> no, of course not. He's always asking for it. But now ask, for instance. Why, we'll, we'll clean up in Hadley State. Slot machines, numbers, racket, dope protection. And that's just the beginning. Harry, give us five years and we'll be making money from every man, woman, and child in the United mm, States. Compared to you, Joe Stalin is an amateur. <laughs> I don't think I'll settle for a mere percentage, Kate, I don't know. My deal's got to be 50-50 or I won't come over and slide down your cellar door. 50-50, why, you... Do you think you'll get away with this? I'm certain of it, no, because the young lady was with me at the plaza. What about She's it? She's Hadley's secretary. I spent a great deal of time and effort on getting a complete file of your misdemeanors, Cato. If I fail to contact her, copies of said file will immediately be sent to all state and federal law enforcement offices. Your pitiful tin types will be forgotten in the headlines about Trubis Cato. You wouldn't want to be named public enemy number one. Fifty-fifty it is. <laughs> The 
going to have it. Nora. Good heavens, girl. What's happened? Harry Lyme, he's with Cato now, or at least he talked with him last night. By this time, he might be dead. Dead? Why don't you call the police or the FBI? You're the governor. Do something. You too, Nora. What do you mean? The notorious Lyme charm. The man's brutal, merciless, vindictive. Lives only for himself. Yet, when he wishes, he can hide all this with a cloak of magnetism. Great fascination. He's blinded you, Nora. No, I hate him. He's a horrible man. I... Oh, I don't know what he is. It's been terrible, all of it. Seeing Cato waiting all night for Harry's call, not hearing, coming here. No, I know, my dear. Believe me, I'm sorry. Yes? Governor Hadley, I'm Mr. Harry Lyme to see you. Harry. And Mr. Cato. Cato here? Uh, send them in, please. Yes, sir. What can it mean? I don't know. Good afternoon, Governor Hadley. Nora. Mr. Lyme. And who was Cato? Surely you haven't forgotten me, Governor. Cato, I told you once and for all. Don't be too hasty, Mr. Governor. My proposition is so good that Mr. Lyme has come in on the deal with me. What? But you agreed to... Lyme? Is this... This thug telling the truth? I've bought certain contracts for your signature, Governor. They'll allow Mr. Cato full-scale operations in your state. Oh, no, you wouldn't. I can't believe it, Lyme. Not even you. The price of the negatives, Governor. Oh, you'd better give me those negatives now, Cato. Prove our good faith to Governor Hadley. <laughs> what good faith? Oh, but here you are, Harry. The negatives and the rest of the pictures. All nicely tied with a pretty ribbon, Governor. A ribbon as blue as Nora's eyes. You, how small can you get? Now, when you sign Mr. Cato's contracts, Governor, I'll deliver the negatives to Miss Payton. That's right. Just sign on the dotted line, Hadley, and everybody will be happy. Sold out because I trusted a rat. Here's your pen, Governor. And here. Back, Nora. Get out of the way. Ah! Lion, what? What are you doing? Down on the floor, Governor. Down on the floor. Gun. Are you crossing me, Harold? Hold it, Cato. It's my deal. Oh, yes. Ah! Oh. Mm. You killed him. What happened? No shot. I suggest you call an ambulance, young lady. There's been an attempt on Governor Hadley's life. My goodness. And keep those people out of here for a minute. How can I ever thank you, Lyme? You risked your life, Harry, and all the time we saw... Save it, save it. I had to kill Cato to take over his very lucrative business myself. I'll keep these negatives, Governor. You what? No, Harry, no. This is one time, Governor Hadley, when you're not getting off so easily. These incriminating negatives in my possession, like the sword of Damocles, will be suspended over your uneasy head from now on. Call them Harry Lyme's annuity, Governor. Now, if you'll excuse me. I might have expected this. And I was beginning to think you were a human being. <laughs> By the time I left the Capitol building, the stars were out. The stars was reached by hard ways. I searched for a likely alley. An alley that was dark enough, lonely enough. Hmm. This one will do well enough. Better remove the ribbon. Blue, blue ribbon. Better to burn them. Oh. oh, another voyage of the night. Greetings, cat. Mutually. And closely. Seem to be a blaze. First the negatives. My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But are my friends and all my foes. Gives a lovely light. Thank you, friend. Your applause is deeply appreciated. Now we have the pictures. Does that warm you, cat? You there. Now, what do you think you're doing in this alley? Isn't it fairly obvious, officer? I'm making a fire. How are you now? Uh, burning some love letters. Girl named Nora. Nora, huh? Well, that's a good Irish name. She had the bluest eyes this side of heaven. I'll eat the ashes to you, officer. But, hey, by the sakes, you're Harry Lyon. Come back here. So long. <laughs> Harry Lyon.
Time returns in just a moment. Franklin said about honesty being the best policy. I wish I could. Just keep slipping my mind. Thank you. 